Welcome to Straight Red Card. Make sure you uh, like, subscribe, share it with your mom, and hit the Gary Busey bell. Bing, 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 bing. Uh, Busey. Why Gary Busey? Busey. Uh, because I think the um, gif that gets used during the bell section is Gary Busey oh, okay, okay. ringing a bell. Gotcha. And, yeah, Gary Busey was a very great actor at one point. I don't know big, if he still big. is. Big teeth, but he's a little crazy now. Very, so. very. Uh, it's all it's a very genetic trait there because his brother, who was in, uh, um, what the fuck was that uh, Starship Trooper movie, uh, had big fucking teeth too. <laughs> that was his brother. Yeah, the big bully, the sergeant. No, uh, the one uh, that was uh, like the, not the guy the... that trained everybody and yelled no, at everybody. No, 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 no. Oh. Uh, so you had, you had the main guy, main star remember him and it was his blonde haired buddy that you know he ended up throwing a knife and getting in his, in his hand at the very beginning yeah i can't remember now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a while since ago. i've seen it but uh yeah he is uh it's uh that's busey's brother right there no shit i didn't know busey's a little less crazy either. looking but still buck teeth <laughs> if you want to see yeah exactly if you want to see gary busey at his prime watch that's not oh. bad either i like that uh, weapon Nope. Buddy Holly story. Okay. Buddy Holly story. Best movie Gary Busey Point break. ever made. That's Point not break. <laughs> Point break. No, he's not in that one. Um, but no, um, check out the Buddy Holly story. I mean, you, you'll you learn about Buddy Holly, too. And there's nothing wrong with that. He's the guy that used to sing, that'll be the day when you say goodbye. That's Buddy Holly. That will be the day. Anyhow. Not to be confused with Weezer, who sings about Buddy Holly. Yes, because Weezer are, <laughs> they're smart, smart guys. Um, um, did, what the hell did you say ab about the Kinsey Institute in the last show? It wasn't the last show. I made it in the comments section of the last show. What the hell was that about? You were, you were talking about uh, ball droppage. Oh, and boy. I said De Derek might not be a doctor, but he did go back to school to major at the Kinsey Institute. You know, it's funny. It's not that uh, any of that's true. It, but I was, <laughs> I was hit by a Playboy writer. Um, I Get had on. I I was parked in a oh. gas station in Bloomington, Indiana, and I went in, came out, and some guy who had pulled in was sitting next to my car on his car and he had apparently hit me hit my car while i was in the store and i came out and he said i i was looking at him like You're, why are you standing right next to my door of my car I'm trying to get in my car i'm gonna leave he's like no i hit your car i'm like oh shit really you hit my car while i was parked here so he's like, yeah, let's go on the other side. So go to the other side. It was, yeah, it wasn't good. It was a big, long scrape and a dent and all that. And he's like, here's my insurance information. God, I wish I remember this guy's name. He wrote for Playboy. He gave me his card. He said, call me if you have any trouble with my insurance company. I'm going to make sure that they pay everything. It was totally my fault. And uh, he, I'm like, oh. so we got into this discussion. While we're waiting for the police to show up to file a report. And I'm like, oh, so you're a writer from Playboy magazine. What, why are you in Bloomington? He's like, oh, I'm at one of these conferences at the Kinsey Institute about sexual studies. And I'm writing an article about this or that or whatever sexual maneuver he mentioned. And I'm like, are you? That's crazy. So I got hit by like a big Playboy writer. He's like, yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, you're the editor. So I went back to that year to try to find his name and i still haven't been successful in doing it but i have a few are you things. looking through all your playboys no i'm looking through my notes because <laughs> i did some notes on this but it's crazy like the editor of playboy hit my car back in 1997 and uh he was there for that conference at the kinsey institute so anyhow your little post brought that all up in my brain so i thought i'd give it a shout out hey Hey, but uh, this show, Giggity, is all about, um, and it's a great question. It's such a big question. We're going to make a show of it all by itself. And um, this question comes from, oh, come on now. I'm 
editing here. I'm editing, editing, <laughs> I'm editing. Here we go. Okay, this question comes from Armando Zarate. Man, dude, you should be a fucking professional soccer player with that. Or a wrestler. That is badass. Or a wrestler. <laughs> Shit, that name's just... What's your name? My name's Armando, Armando. Zarate. Fuck. Can we fuck? <laughs> Also, he says, also, I have question. I have, well, he's not in the end troll. He just didn't put some words in there. Also, I have question for next segment. For the next segment, who's most likely to be the next crop of guys going to Europe? I got Robinson, Paredes, and Bassett. Okay. Um, yeah, should be Miles Robinson. We've talked about that already, right? So, awesome, yeah. I mean, Paredes. Absolutely, yes. Uh, uh, Shane, I th- didn't he just get injured? He's no longer going to be in the uh, the Camp Calcutta camp? He is. Now, listen, when I say go to Europe, he, you, you got to make sure you're going to get a good spot a good and a good place. And I mean, you can't just hop over there and start playing for Antwerp or something. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody did that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gotta- against going over to play for Antwerp. No, I mean, it worked out for Vines, but you got to make sure it's going to work out. You got to have some sort of understanding of that this is not going to be easy. You're going to have to learn a new language um, Mm -hmm. in many cases, unless you go to the championship in England. Um, And even then you might not understand at least 50% of the people who talk to you in English with quotes on. So listen, everything's going to be a cultural experience. You're going to have to learn new food gonna have to if you go to england might learn how to eat fish and chips but not the same not the same fish and chips you're eating in fucking long john silvers trust me (laughs) it's a lot better so it'll be a bump up and you'll like it better um but this is a really i mean this is interesting that we're thinking there's going to be a crop there is a crop but let me explain what the crop usually ends up being it's usually two or three people people you probably were thinking were going to go over, like, say, Aronson or whatever last time, Um, Busio, Tessman, you know, maybe you didn't even expect Tessman, but, you know, it happened. But then there's a flurry, okay? Son of a bitch, you're going to steal my point. In the crop, yes, where it's a bunch of young kids. You have no fucking clue exists. son of a bitch. Well, topic (laughs) over. I've got nothing to add to here. (laughs) No, I, that's, that was exactly my point. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's definitely going to be some MLS starters, especially the younger ones, the Pepe, the, you know, everything, like all those names, you know, Robinson. Yeah. Of course, they're going to eventually make their way over and they're going to come up. There's always going to be at least one or two of them. Mm-hmm. This season. Maybe maybe just one, who knows. But uh, yeah, like the bulk of that crop that he's alluding to are all going to be relative no names unless you follow the youth uh youth uh like the mls next program or yeah. da prior to co or beer bug and i mean we know some of the ones that are going over already jonathan gomez Caden clark muller's going so yeah yep. we've already got like that crop is already heading over there now whether those teams that they're going to are worth going to that's a whole nother question you know is muller going to scotland really going to help him probably not is Caden Clark going to Leipzig unless he gets loaned to Salzburg? You know, is that going to be good for him? Or is he just going to, you know, start playing for the Leipzig two team? And how good is that for him? I don't know the answer to these questions. We know Jordi Mihailovic is over there in Bologna right now mm-hmm. um, on trial. So, you know, there are people we also know that need to go over there or do something. Daryl DK. Yep. Jesus Ferreira, Ricardo Pepe, Cole Bassett has actually talked about publicly wanting and to move to Europe and make a move. Miles Robinson hasn't talked about it, but he needs to start talking about it and get his agent on it yeah. because he needs to move to Europe. <laughs> He's our best center back. I, was gonna say, I, I, feel, I feel like we should get some form of compensation for this because we've talked about him a number of times already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Miles, if you're not moving to Europe this, this January window, your agent sucks and yeah. sucks after, after, selling after, you. After this, after this six months of uh, of nonstop national team play and good national team play, 
Yeah, he should absolutely be on his phone talking to it, talking to clubs. It busts my brain that nobody. I when Boca Negra says things like, "There's still, no, I still there's stand firm really interest here." The level of quali- uh, quanti- uh, quality for bids, I think. Well, then I'm say sure that. People- yeah. If if you're Carlos Be- Bocanegra, quit being a USSF type creep, an inauthentic prick, and just say, "Yeah, we've had some offers, but so far they haven't been good enough." Say that. Don't it's- say there has been no interest, yeah. no zero interest in um in Miles Robinson. If I I can't believe it either, Brett. I think he's full of shit. Um, Justin Ch- and he is a USSF US soccer plant anyhow um justin che yeah another guy you'd like to see him go but right now you know maybe he needs another year at fc dallas i don't know i don't know um austin trusty sure seem to make the same kind of case mckenzie has made in the past um uh, i'm thinking uh let's see who else i've already mentioned daryl dk right kevin parides we talked about moses neiman too you know, and then again, it also comes down, by the way, to whether you have a passport, an EU passport. And if you're under the age of 18, you're not going anywhere. Um, so you'll notice in, in some of our U15 teams, for instance, there are some really great players in the U15s and U17 player uh, teams, but only the ones that have EU passports will go over to Europe and be, start with in the a, league. Yeah, usually so, Germany. So usually yeah, and, Germany. And, and to bring up that point, we talk. Uh, I know in the I know in the previous segment we talked about this when he got the transfer when he got the transfer over, but uh, FC Dallas's uh, Philip Akem uh, went over to Hoffenheim mm-hmm. uh, earlier in the year. Uh, I sent you a, I sent you a screenshot of the, the what I'm not going to butcher his first name, but Kieran Fletcher. Yep. Uh, he everybody's jumping through hoops to figure out where he's going, and uh, most people are 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 even Dortmund came out and said it, but there it looks like he's going to Dortmund. Hmm. So the, I mean these, these are these are players that that most the vast majority of uh, of U.S. fans don't know about, and they they see a, a something pop up on their feed saying this person signed with this team. It's like who the hell is this? Where are they at? But that's yeah. what the, that's what the bulk that's what the bulk of uh, most European transfers are from us is that. There are like you. Well, you you uh, you have a list of like three hundred plus players in Europe, plus, and most yes. of those players went over there without the bulk of us knowing about it. Or yeah, well, they're already lot, there, but I mean, they're from all kinds of academies all yeah. over the United States. A lot of them, pretty prominent ones like Solar and Barcel the Barcelona academies, mm-hmm. etc. But I think the thing that uh, ties it all together is that all of the players that went over there before they were eighteen had eu passports and that yep. makes a massive difference if your grandmother has a passport you can get an eu passport um so like i could get an eu passport my mom is a german citizen and an american citizen i could get one if i needed one but nobody wants to sign me so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah i was gonna say you're, you're about uh 30 years and two knee injuries away from, yeah, uh, from being signed, uh, but yeah, even even after even after they're eighteen, though, uh, I mean, there are other there are other hoops to jump through in order to get into England. You have to have had X, like whatever it was, like seventy five percent of that year's caps with the national yeah. team, right? Uh, if you're in Italy, there's only so many foreign players that they can sign on a yearly basis, right? We talked and about so- Germany, and I think Holland doesn't have much of any reg- uh, limit. Maybe they do. I don't know. But Germany doesn't. But Germany yeah. does not. So that's why I think right now the bulk of our youth and bulk of our um, 18 plus are going to Germany at this point. Yeah, but that's why the list of the 18 and unders is so long. In I mean, we got kids playing all over Germany right now. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and they're playing on the U17 and U19 teams of German teams. They're just it's you know it's hard to track. By the way, um, but. Um, and then let's talk about a few others. Uh, Cade Cowell, I think, yes. But he, Cade Cowell's now talking about, well, I'm willing to play right back if necessary and hmm. move to Europe if that's what, you know, people want me to Alfonso do. Alfonso Davies route? I mean, yeah. Yeah, he's fast. <laughs> he's powerful. Yeah. I mean, um, I think he's 
probably not going to be skilled overly technical enough to play like you know in in a decent top five league um as a right winger but he is good enough and athletic enough to play as a defender now i don't know about his defense because i don't see him play a whole lot of it I yeah mean, but I, neither, neither do most of our wingbacks yeah but <laughs> a lot of people can make that transition you know uh from left back to left winger or left or winger back to left back yeah, yeah. Uh, matt turner i mean i would love to see him to go to a championship team for instance that is already sort of embraced the idea that they're going to not play out of the back. They're going to play, you know, straightforward attacking football, long ball. Eng- old English style. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, there are teams like that in the yeah. championship. There are fewer of them in the Premier League. So him getting into the Premier League, probably not. And then in Germany, I think- play- playing yeah, out of the back is pretty prominent as well so ugh. i think uh given given his age and given his skill set i don't necessarily foresee a a trip abroad he could but just be a very well skilled goalkeeper in mls and run out his national team career too yeah but and i haven't he, really i haven't really heard anything from him about like i'm interested in that sure some players come out and say yeah that's where i want to go a lot of players don't say anything and you don't know where they stand. Matt's one of those guys. I've never heard him say my goal is to get to Europe and play top five leagues in the world. I'm never sure. I'm, sh- I'm sure it's one of those things where he's, he's thought about it, but it's just it never made us. Ne- it may not necessarily be a goal of his. Maybe he just wants to remain at home and uh, play at his career as a, con- a, a consistent, strong starter for an MLS team. Again, the only way a European team is going to sign him if it's, if it is the type of team that says we're going to play direct football. We're going to mm-hmm. play big defense and then we're going to do counter ball and we're not going to play ticky tacky in the, you know, the back final third. If you have a team like that. So that's why it makes it so hard for Matt to go. Yeah. Like, you know, it was easy for, I'm not going to say it was easy, but it was easier for Friedel and Howard and um, Keller because back then, being really good with your feet was really not an expectation any team had for a goalkeeper. Like they expect you to do like the basics, but you know, basically when they pass it back to you, they were just praying you didn't mistrap it and went in the goal. <laughs> as long as they could be pretty Damn you sure, turf. As, as long as they could be sure that that wasn't going to happen, but on a 99% basis, you were probably good enough to play goalie. If you could kick a six foot pass, to a center back or a uh, right back or left back. I mean, listen, so, or just clear it. If you could clear it without like woof, whiffing and uh, the ball rolling into the net, that's a good thing back then. But we have come to a totally different time. And I know people have asked this question, why aren't there, Merrick, we used to have so many goalkeepers in Europe. Now we have like nobody. What's going None on there? We're starting either. <laughs> yep. And the answer is, the expectations have changed for goalkeeper. They're they're like a third center back in a lot of cases, as far as they're concerned. Yeah. So yeah, if you're playing back th- back three, so that the expectations have turned, and that's why it's going to be uphill for Matt Turner. James Sands, probably a good idea for him to challenge himself at some point. I don't know if it's going to happen this window. No, and I don't think you it know, will. yeah, if it does, it'll be like Holland or Belgium or the championship or like one of those bottom rung teams. I mean, it could be, I mean, depending on what kind of trend Venezia is setting, <laughs> since they're doing so well, maybe other teams will be like, well, fuck, I can well, go I, buy a bunch yeah. of cheap Americans and keep myself up too. Well, I feel like with no, San, yeah, San's situation, uh, not looking at club, but most, most, most Euro teams would probably take a gander at the national team performances first and foremost. And uh, he's, his, uh, his games have been sort of a mixed bag. Yeah. Some of, them, some of them have been great. Some of them have been bad. Yeah, that's true. But then he just did win the MLS Cup. So, I mean, was he on the field? I thought he was injured. Hell yeah, he was on the field. I thought he was injured. No. Maybe that was a week prior. It was Parks. Oh, maybe, nah. Well, yeah. Keaton I thought Park. Sands was too, though. No, Keaton Parks didn't play, um, which was sad. And there's another guy 
honestly. I mean, he's, he's already not, abroad once. I know. And then that, that's the thing. Sometimes these guys, they come back, they never go back. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of sad because, I mean, he's not going to, there's no evidence at all that Greg gives two shits about Keaton Parks. And I think he's performed admirably for them the whole season. That's the reason they were in the playoffs. Um, he started almost every game. So, I mean, okay. So there's the, that kind of guy that's not going to get any attention and probably not going back. There's people keep asking, why not Pomacall? Did you watch Pomacall this season? <laughs> no, because he was injured most of it. <laughs> no, he played in a lot of it. I'm joking. I know. He was injured before. Number one, his injury is proneness to be injured is another reason that no one's going to be interested in Europe. And number two, he had a crummy season. Watch him play. Not a good season for FC Dallas. Uh, your your boy, Slanina, too, too young. Early. Too early. No, too not early. even too young. Too early in his career. He's had like a handful of performances so far. Yeah, but you guys have shipped some of your other Chicago kids off to Fulham. It wasn't Damian Lass. It was the other guy um, that they have. The older guy can't remember his name anyhow um that was a chicago kid <clears throat> and uh so they're not adverse to doing it so uh, i think they they might um long aaron long too late and zimmerman it's too late both for both of them i mean i mean zimmerman you probably squeeze a good few years out of him if you signed him right away but I think Long's even older. I think Damian Loss is the one that's coming up right now. No, nah, it's the older kid. <sighs> Plays for the U23s. Actually was a backup in Fulham's last game because their backup keeper was injured or had the Rona. One of the two. Um, and the name's just escaping me right now. Um, and when we say it, we're going to be like, God, what's wrong with us? <laughs> How come, how come our brains are so fried? Mm, let's see. Well, maybe he's the one then. They got another guy too. Another goalkeeper. American goalkeeper. And he's in the U23s. Mm. Or he's in the two team. Sorry. Yeah. U23s. And then uh, Loss is in the U18, U19s. Excuse me. All right. So um, that's about everybody. I mean, are we missing anybody? I'm, am I missing? I'm sure I am. Okay, the point is, this doesn't really necessarily answer your question about the likely crop of guys going to Europe. The fact is, there already uh, yeah. is a like there already is a crop going. Yeah, and and a lot of the answers are who we would expect, anyways. A lot of the common answers, but yeah, yeah. the bulk the bulk of it, uh, the bulk of those that crop that's going to be going abroad are the who crew, you know, <laughs> the players you yes. don't know. Exactly. It's the academies, the solar academies, the Barcelona, U.S. Barcelona based academies, the, mm -hmm. you know, with kids with with I mean, there's no way I know which kids have EU passports, <laughs> passports. Yes. Passports. Um, and and who doesn't? I don't know all that. I mean, I would have to go on Ancestry.com and start like, you know, tracking who their parents were. Or their Ain't grandparents nobody got time were. for that. No. We're just going to find out when Augustus McGriff ends up at fucking QPR's U17 team. We're like, Augustus McGriff? Who the fuck is that? No, seriously, that's an actual player. And yes, he was <laughs> he was a QPR. And when he got there and I saw it posted, I was in the transfer market. I was like, who's that kid? I've pretty never sure heard of that kid. I'm pretty sure I made a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory reference to that. Have you? Yeah, you have. Because <laughs> I think I, I he played a game in like the U17s or you, and I was like, yes. And Augustus McGiff went 20 minutes, and you're like, Augustus McGiff, what the hell? Are you that serious? That kid that fell into the chocolate? What? <laughs> By the way, before we end the show, what the fuck up is with that Taco Bell commercial? Have you seen the one where the guy comes into this room and, with all these other people around? I think it's like a subway area. And he's wearing horns on his head. And he's got a shield and a sword, a like ram yeah, horn. Yeah, well, it's, it's yeah, it's down on the down in the subway, and uh, and he turns and he sees another person dressed exactly like him, and then he wa starts walking. I, I don't know if it's a him or a her. It's sort of ambiguous, and 
as this person walks towards the other person dressed exactly like them, their shield accidentally hits like a metal garbage, and it goes ding. Dun. No, it's it's the it's the Taco Bell sound. Like, yeah, <laughs> boing, dong. And then he has he's like, oh fuck it, I don't care about this. I'm going back to to Taco Bell. Yeah, they go. Oh, that's right. I am hungry. I'm gonna go digest some Taco Bell. And fuck this guy that dressed <laughs> uh, so absurdly just like I did. But what is that? What's that from? Is that some sort of, uh, uh, what are the, uh, 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 Comic-Con thing? Is it could that... be a Comic-Con. could be a LARPing. Who knows? Is it, I think I think the concept is that two peas in a what's pot found LARP? each other. What's LARP? LARPing? LARPing? What the fuck uh, is that? LARPing is basically when you, you go do like that, uh, that sword fighting and fantasy shit out in the park. You know, lightning bolt, lightning bolts with a ram head on your head. Sure, you could be like a, a satyr or something like that. What? You know? What's a? S- a ha- it's a half goat with horns and shit. You know? Is this some sort of Dungeons and Dragons shit? I'm not aware of. Sure, but in real life, that's what LARPing is. You go out and you pretend you're in some fantasy world with a bunch of other people dressed up in ridiculous outfits. Uh, it's a mix between a, Ren- a Renaissance fair and D and D. Is there? Is there sex involved? I'm sure there are some triple X versions of that. I'm guessing it's the biggest conglomeration. But if, you're doing, if you're doing it on the public park, you probably don't want to do it. I think it's just like <laughs> probably the biggest conglomeration of virgins in one area. That's what I'm <laughs> probably not too far off. And like some guy dressed like Darth Vader, right? And you go, which one of these buttons? You're like, calls you're like, your, you're like bro, calls your mother bro, LARPing. This is this isn't a convention. Get away. That's what they're going to say to him. All right. Well, remember, that was that great skit that uh, the insult dog did. See, uh... When he went up to the Darth Vader guy, he's like, which one of these buttons on your chest calls your mom to pick you up to go home? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do remember that. It was funny as hell. It's good shit. All right. We're going to move on to the third segment because we're getting frosty. All right. And uh, you should, too, make sure you like, subscribe, share it with your Uncle Rick. And, uh, I mean, he could be named Richard, or he could call himself Dick. Well, I mean, people take Richard, you can become Richard Rick or Richard Dick. I prefer Rick. Most people do, too, because who wants to be called a Dick, right? All right. Until the next time on the Straight Red Card, we will see you on segment three. <laughs>